Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis of the Shankar AS Academy brought to you by the Civilspedia team and this is Abhinaya Sampar for today's current affair analysis for the date of 22nd October 2024. So there has been six important articles selected for the day from various newspapers that is the Hindu Indian Express and for this half of the video the topics for discussion are as follows. First. The article title Riding the Waves from the Hindu discusses about the cyclone Dana. Next is the article title Secularism is a core part of the constitution. Supreme Court by the Hindu discusses about the importance of secularism. And we would be discussing about the provisions under secularism. And the final uh, article titled India's Growth Outlook Supported by Robust Domestic Engines by the Indian Express where it discusses the RBI's prediction of the GDP to be increased to be increasing due to the domestic and capital investments. So without any much further delay, let us get into the articles discussion one by one along with the prelims practice question. Moving on to the first news, the fishermen of the Vishakapatnam coast on Monday have been asked to not to get or venture into the sea since the cyclonic storm called Dana which is expected to make a landfall in Odisha on Thursday. So, just giving a small introduction, a low pressure system has been formed in the east central of the Bay of Bengal and due to which there would be a cyclonic storm formation and this cyclonic storm would be called as Dana. Note that it is a tropical cyclone. Here uh, by the standard convention of naming the tropical cyclones, the storm has been named as Dana by the country of Qatar. Here in Arabic, uh, Dana means generosity. So, the prediction is the storm has been having its landfall uh, likely on the October of 25th and there has been a red alert given for these upcoming 3 days. So, in light of this article, we should know how important cyclone detection and early warning and cyclone preparedness is all about. So, without any much delay, let us get to the further information of the article. So, cyclone preparedness involves a lot of multiple levels where there is integration of uh, every state national as well as local governments when it comes to cyclone disasters or natural disasters in general. So, when it comes to cyclone preparedness, there is a detailed step by step process of guidelines given by the National Disaster Management Authority and the Indian Meteorological Department. So, now looking into the first step, first is the cyclone detection and early warning. Here, the responsibility comes under the Indian Meteorological Department as well as the Ministry of Earth and Science. Here the uh, IMD tracks the cyclone using satellites, radars and automatic weather stations. They provide continuous updates on the cyclone formation, its intensity, its path or its way of going and its potential landfall through the bulletins in the map. Here the alerts are categorized into stages like the pre-cyclone watch, cyclone alert, cyclone warning and post landfall warning. For example, uh, cyclone Yaz of 2021 had been accurately predicted for its uh, potential landfall. So, thus it helped in timely evacuations and so on. Now, the next step is evacuation planning and execution. Here, the responsibility comes under the State Disaster Management Authority, National Disaster Resource Force and District Disaster Management Authority. So, to know Odisha is the first state to bring in the State Disaster Management Authority under the name Odisha State Disaster Management Authority. Here, under this process, vulnerable areas are identified such as the coastal villages, low-lying areas by the district or the local authorities. And next step is to help in the evacuation process, especially for the vulnerable groups where orders are given by the district collectors therefore advising the people to move to a safer place. Here the national disaster response force as well as the state disaster response force are deployed uh, to assist in evacuating people who also involve children, elderly people and so on. So temporary shelters, uh, cyclone shelters are constructed under the national cyclone risk mitigation project. And school, and school buildings are uh, equipped with foods, essentials and so on, which include uh, water, sanitation, bedding and so on. Now, moving on to the third process, which is the resource pre-positioning and coordination. 
here the responsibility again comes under the national disaster management authority ministry of the home affairs and other local authorities so essential supplies like the water medicine food are already prepositioned in the high risk areas so here the coordination between the various uh, agencies such as the national disaster response force our indian navy our indian force and the coast guard who would be ensuring for swift mobilization of essentials for the services provided next is the dissemination of warnings to the communities here the responsibility comes under the local authorities and the uh, panchayati raj institutions and civil defences and wo other volunteers so when it comes to the process the local authorities along with the panchayati uh, raj institutions and other community based organizations they give the alerts through radios uh, speakers mobile alerts sms and tv announcements and so on here the common alert protocol or the cap are been used by the authorities to issue warnings uh, through multiple channels for example like mausam and damini here communities are educated or given awareness for the emergency preparedness uh, through regular mock drills or awareness campaigns so this includes the important idea of how fishermen are not supposed or advised to not go through the shore during such situations so these small efforts can lead ultimately to minimizing casualties due to the cyclone disasters and final is the post landfall rescue and relief here the responsibility comes under the national disaster uh, response force state disaster response force the indian army the india navy as well as the indian air force here once the cyclone makes a landfall the uh, end ndrf team carries the people as well as the debris which has been around the people so that there would be clearing of the debris so that the people would be uh, rescued in a more safer manner who are trapped under collapsed infrastructures and so on so here temporary health campaigns would be set up for medical care and essential supplies for distribution and so through this there is community participation by the local authorities as well as by the state and the national department to help as well as empathize with the casualties now moving on to the prelims practice question for this article consider the following statements regarding the cyclone preparedness in india the common alert protocol is used for issuing multi channel warnings including sms radio and mobile apps the state disaster response force is responsible for long term rehabilitation and recovery for after cyclones and third is the national disaster management authority collaborates with the local authorities for community awareness and mock drills so which of the statements are right uh, option 1 and 3 are right here the option 2 that is the state disaster response force is responsible for the immediate rehabilitation and effective disaster management uh, systems and guidelines but for long term rehabilitation it is the state as well as the national uh, agencies now moving on to the next article so the supreme court on monday have declared that secularism is a core part of the constitution and it is also the basic structure of the constitution so there has been interpretation about the term secularism and socialism in the supreme court by different petitioners where the arguments were how the term secularism and socialism were added as a part of 42nd amendment act in the preamble of the constitution in, uh, during the emergency of the 1976 here the petitioners arguments were it was added during the emergency period and the words like socialism are curbing the freedom of its people and bringing in strict observation through the state but here the court argues that through the landmark judgment of the keshavananda bharati case preamble can be amended as far it uh, doesn't affect the basic structure of a constitution the court also argued that uh, words like socialism and secularism will bring in equal opportunities for its people so these were the things which was discussed in the article so as before moving on to know what is secularism and its provisions uh, to it we have to understand how any law can be interpreted by different people or any word can be different uh, interpreted under the judicial lens so now let's move on to the next part of the discussion now let us 
let's see what is secularism is it is the principle or a belief that religion should be separate from the political social and educational institutions of the state and that of the individuals should have the freedom to practice their own religion without any interference of the preference from the state now having an important comparisons between the indian versus the western secularism here in indian secularism it adopts a model for equal respect for all religions rather than strict separation country india is known for having the model of separation of power so the indian state can intervene in religious practices to also to ensure social justice equality and public order for example the abolition of untouchability whereas when it comes to the western secularism here uh, there is a strict separation of the church as well as the state for example the famous usa and the france here the state does not interfere in any of the religious matters and does not endorse or support any religious activities also now moving on to the provisions to protect the secularism in india first is when it comes to the constitution of india 1950 here under article 14 which guarantees equality before the law and equal protection of the citizens regardless of their religion next is article 15 where it prohibits the discrimination on the grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth next under the constitution is the article 25 to 28 where it provides freedom for the religion to all individuals to freely practice profess and propagate their religion and also setting limitations when it comes to public order or morality and health and under the constitution of india under article 29 and 30 it protects the rights of the religious and linguistic minorities to conserve their culture and establish and administer uh, educational institutions now looking into the next provision under the indian penal code of ipc 1860 or recently known as the bharatiya nyaya sanhiti here under section 153a it prohibits promoting enmity uh, between different religious groups next is section uh, 295a where it penalizes deliberate and hideous acts intended to outrage the religious feelings of any religious groups next under ipc or the bns uh, section 298 punishes uttering words or making gestures on hurting the religious sentiments and finally section 505 so under section 505 clause 2 it prevents making of statements that bring in enmity or create hateness or ill will between the different religious groups next is under the religious institutions that is the prevention of misuse act of 1988 it aims to prevent the misuse of religious institutions for political purposes next is the places of worship special provisions act of 1991 here uh, it prohibits the conversion of religious character of any place which was existed on august 15th of 1947 so here Uh, if it has any significance place based on historical references and traditional references there cannot be conversion of those religious characters next is the representation of the people act of 1951 here under the section 123 clause 3 the act declares using religion caste or community based uh, appeals to seek votes during elections as a corrupt practice and finally looking into the protection of civil rights act of 1955 here originally known as the uh, untouchability offences act of 1955 this law makes the practice of untouchability as a punishable offence so moving on to the prelims practice question for this article consider the following statement uh, statement 1 indian secularism is known as positive while western secularism is known as negative and statement 2 in india the state may intervene in religious affairs to ensure harmony and public order while in the west the state maintains a strict separation from religion which of the statements are right so here the answer is both the statements are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1 here by many scholars uh, comparative politics and sociology indian secularism is known as the positive one while the western secularism is known as the negative one now moving on to the final news here india's growth is driven by strong domestic demand and public investments despite the global challenges so the rbi forecast that 6.8 percentage of the gdp growth for the july to september of 2024 with some slowdown due to weaker agriculture has been predicted 
here the government and the private investments remain a very crucial moment where favorable monsoons are also expected to boost crop output so let us see what is the india's growth outlook and uh, gdp projections here so the projection which is given by the rbi that is 6.8 percentage hike in the gdp for the financial year of 2024 to 25 is due to the domestic factors like the private consumption that is spending by the households and also by the public investments in infrastructures so here one of the main reasons given in this article is because of the capital expenditure or the capex and the investment so let us see what is government capex or capital expenditure is all about so here capital expenditure or capex refers to the investments made by the government to or private sector to build physical assets like infrastructure and other long term protective resources here capex is very crucial for sustaining long term economic growth by increasing or boosting the productivity or enhancing the public services and improving the overall business when it comes to the market environment especially for a country like india where startups are very important and budding so the efforts to increase the capex uh, government have brought in few initiatives first is the national infrastructure Play, uh, pipeline here which was launched during the 2019 till the period of 2025 with an outlay of uh, almost 100 lakh crore it aims to revamp india's infrastructure across the many key sectors such as the transportation energy uh, urban development and water resources so here it ensures for seamless connectivity and networking through efficient infrastructure so that india can become a 5 trillion sorry 5 trillion economy which is a very big ambitious and a very huge target sorry here in uh, energy sector investments will expand renewable energy capacity by contributing to india's renewable energy target of 450 gigawatt by 2023 next is pm gati shakti that is the national master plan it was launched in 2021 with the aim to bring in a multimodal connectivity by integrating different sectors like the roads railways waterways aviation and telecom under one platform so even in the financial year budget there has been uh, utmost importance for road connectivities so the aim also involves optimization of the resources properly through all of the ministries involved now we have seen the government uh, initiatives now moving on to private sector investments so in initiatives like the corporate tax cuts and regulatory ease it helps to incentivize the private sector investments as the government brings in reduced corporate tax rates from 30% to 22 percentage in 2019 as it is seen as one of the largest fiscal reforms in the recent times so the aim is to increase profits for businesses for the emerging of businesses allowing them to invest in more uh, in expansion and innovation projects when it comes to the reforms in the ease of doing businesses india has moved up to the 63rd position in the world's bank doing business 2020 report where there is simplification of procedures uh, single window clearances and fewer regulatory hurdles for starting of businesses so this option can answer the wide question of digital gap and finally is the make in india initiative it was launched in 2014 an indigenous move by the government to provide subsidies and tax benefits to boost domestic manufacturing in key sectors such as the defense production automobiles textiles pharmaceuticals and so on and electrics also so we can also include semiconductor as one of the important criteria in it so this initiative promotes local manufacturing to reduce the imports as well as to enhance the exports and create jobs here for example apple and samsung have set up manufacturing plants in india under the production linked scheme that is the pli scheme thus making india a hub for smartphone production especially now let us look into a prelims practice question uh, regarding this article so this is a different kind of mcq which we have already seen 
in during our UPSC prelims examinations. Here the assertion statement is investments in infrastructure contribute significantly to long term economic growth in India. And the reason for it is infrastructure investments reduce logistic cost to improve connectivity and enhance the productivity across the various sectors. So select the correct answer using the code given here both the statement A that is the assertion and the reason are true and R is the correct explanation when it comes to the assertion here again investments in infrastructure contribute significantly to long term economic growth and thus it reduces the logistic cost improves connectivity and enhance the productivity across the various sectors so thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to give a like comment and a share and to further not to miss any other content subscribe to our channel thank you and have a great day